Yes, you can use a gimbal in a live streaming scenario. It could take your production quality to a whole new level. It looks amazing. But in order to do this, you need to make sure that you're able to modify your current gimbal setup to be conducive specifically for streaming. And you'll probably need to listen to an idiot that had gone through all of the problems and made the mistakes over and over and over again so that you don't have to. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Hey, it's Ryan. Welcome to episode nine of our Gearbox series. I'm in the control room of Tuned In Live here in Nashville, Tennessee, where we broadcast live streams of musical performances in real time, just on the other side of that wall. And since it's in real time, that means that we're not able to edit our footage in post or add stabilization after the fact. So when we wanted to add a handheld camera, we needed to make sure that it was stabilized as we were filming it. And this is the rig that we've come up with that works the most consistently, is the most dependable and durable for our situation. We've got a Panasonic GH4 camera, which doesn't have any internal stabilization, an SLR Magic Cine 3 Hyper Prime lens, which is a 25 millimeter, also no internal stabilization. It's sitting on top of our DJI Ronin SC gimbal. We've got the Pro Combo, so it's got our motorized focus. We've got a digital photo or DF handlebar on the side which holds our power bank, which runs to a dummy battery within the GH4. And that's on top of a U-Rig clamp. A small rig clamp over here holds our Feel World F5 Pro external camera monitor. And then we've got a HDMI clamp on the side that holds our main HDMI output. Links to all of those pieces are in the description. The reason that we like this is that everything's very compact. It's very controllable and we're able to get right up close with our performers. And the Micro Four Thirds platform is a very small camera size, so it's able to work really well on the smaller Ronin setup. Obviously, the biggest issue that you're going to run into with having a gimbal in live streaming is the cabling. Can't have anything hang on a gimbal. If you've used any gimbal before, you know how, you know, they, they could just be really testy. So, yeah, I said it any kind of push or pull and you're gonna yo he doesn't like that oh he doesn't like that it's gonna make the gimbal go out of whack it could throw it out of balance and ruin your shots so we want to make sure that not only is our cabling out of the way of getting caught on the gimbal we want to make sure that it's not going to sway because then it could possibly move the weight and shift the balance of the gimbal the way that we've done that is by using nothing but very thin and light cables and we are running those cables around the arm of our gimbal and then finding different points to create a point of tension on each side so that the tension of the cables is never directly on the camera or on one of the axes, axes of the gimbal itself. The one thing that I can say works the very best out of this entire setup is actually this nanosecond cable. I promise it's worth just spending an extra couple bucks to get that specific cable because it's so light and thin and dependable. Make sure when you're balancing the camera, you're doing so when the actual cables are run and not tied down, but at least in the camera itself so that the gimbal is getting used to having that weight and you're able to move the gimbal around and see where your points of contact can be to take the tension off of the gimbal itself. When you're ready to start tethering those cables to the gimbal arm itself, make sure to start from the closest point of the camera and then work your way out. Reason is that you're gonna start seeing where your axis is moving and then just making sure that you leave adequate slack in that point, tether down, and then move to the next point. Currently, I've got three spots on the gimbal arm that I've got tethered down, and then I've got two points where I'm just using some gaff tape for some more cable management, and it keeps the bottom cables away from the motion of the rest of that gimbal arm. You'll have to play around with this. Make sure that whenever you move the gimbal around, that not only are the cables missing everything, that they're not getting caught or hung up anywhere. 
that you have enough slack to be able to do the movements that you want to do on a gimbal. On the bottom, we're making sure that any excess cabling is also taken care of and we're cable managed. So this is always going to be set up and it's not gonna move. We've even got a couple of zip ties holding our small rig ball joint to our camera monitor to make sure that this isn't gonna go anywhere. The one thing that's not really zip tied down is our feed out because just like this, I can take this rig around the studio and film B-roll for whatever content we're getting at the time. So I just pop an SD card into the camera itself. We've got the RSS connector um, into the gimbal, so we're able to actually hit just the record button on the back of the gimbal, and then we're ready to go to film whatever we're trying to film that isn't a live stream situation. Another great thing about this setup is that when we are done filming, we put the gimbal down, obviously turn the camera off and lens cover on, take the battery out of our monitor, and we just plug in our power bank via USB and then plug in our Ronin SC via USB-C, and then we know everything's gonna be ready the next day when we turn it all on. Last word of caution is that our setup is made for our studio situation, so we're not making it set up to be pulled apart very regularly. So we're not traveling with this, it's just staying in our studio and that's how it works. Another cool thing about the Ronin SC is if we don't have a camera operator and we still wanna have a little bit more movement of this camera angle, we can just mount that onto a tripod and then actually use Force Mobile within the app and get some more motion that way. So why'd we decide to go through all this trouble to use a gimbal? Well, here's what it looks like if we just hold the camera with our hands and there's no internal stabilization. And then this is what it looks like when we actually use the gimbal and it's all set up correctly. I think that speaks for itself as to why it's worth it for us to have that. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. Remember all of the pieces of this gimbal build are in the description below. Make sure to follow and subscribe if you thought this was helpful because we not only do video gear reviews and demos, we also go over our audio gear that we use here in the studio as well. The subscription also shows you all of the shows that we've done here at the studio and you can kind of see the progression of us learning how to be better at live streaming as we're going along. We've also got some pretty talented musicians that have come through here as well. So make sure to check it out. Thank you again so much for watching because no matter where you're watching from, when you're here, you're with the band. Take it easy.